Hello, this is Hawk the Bean, and today we are going to the back rooms. Level 134 of the back rooms. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Before we begin, there is a disclaimer here that I would like to read for, for you as much as I would like to read it for myself. This article features the themes of cancer, homelessness, and death from both of them too. If that's something you find disturbing or uncomfortable, please skip the interview logs at your own discretion. Survival difficulty, class zero. Safe, secure, populated by harmless entities. Description. Level 134's landscape is one that exists as an entirely flat plain of shallow, deep blue water. It is dotted not only by occasional permeating dunes of sand that are outcry from the ocean and, ir and irregular patches, but also by rusted or rotted ancient sea vessels. Said boats are set in an, in an abandoned, capsized state of in, in the water. The water it always stays at a consistent low height, experiencing zero changes in height or general movement due to, lack, due to a lack of natural tides. These levels oceans are never dragged in, nor are they moved out. This lack of movement happens despite the existence of, of a sun, moon, stars, and a general cycle between night and day, which would, in most cases, create tides. The waters stay at a consistent depth of 2 feet, or 0.61 meters, only alternating when rising up the patches is of sand or occasional pockets in which depths low in which depth lowers to a hardy noticeable two and a half feet. The water is a deep shade of cer cerulean blue and has an element of blue cloudiness in its makeup, which elicits an illusion of far greater depth than what it actually holds. The bed under the water is soft, wet, and relatively a firm sand, though it is dense enough to hold people's feet in motion and dense enough to hold you partially in, to hold and partially e, e, em the old vessels in its mass. Staying in place for too long has caused the sand to somewhat give way in prior explorations. This light moderate hazard has never once been known to be lethal, with lethal suffocation or trapping presumably needing days to fully transpire. The most of level 134 comprises of blank, shallow oceans, occasional small outcrops of sand up here above sea level. Most of these islands will, will be no longer than a few meters, though some have occasionally been found on to stretch at two upwards of 30 to 50 meters from one end to the other. Ultimately, however, these islands are just as barren as the ocean's waters, possessing no lives no life other than in the lo uh, level's natural entities. Boats. As briefed at the start of the article, Love 134 is home to a fair collection of old, capsized, capsized seafaring vessels that dot and run its surfaces, existing both in shallow waters and the occasional sand islands. These boats can usually be found Im embedded into the ocean and the and seabed. They are often sunken anywhere from just a few centimeters in, all the way to being buried up to the deck and cabin. The boats show aging of a, of around 20 years of neglect and abandonment at the minimum, and are mostly rusted or rotten, depending on the build of the ship, or covered in moss and algae if it resides in the ocean. These boats also have a questionable structural integrity in the wood or metal construction, regardless of their location. Boring the boats is often easy, with most waters choosing to use the ship's ladders, ropes, or anchors to otherwise simply, or otherwise simply scaling its construction without additional aid. The decks of these vessels possess little to the eye, with most being empty of supplies, food, or much else beside nails, rotten rope, and shards of glass. The cockpits are, in most instances, left in a surprisingly pure and untouched condition. However, they are still subject to the same weathering as the exteriors of the vessels. The dials, lev 
levers and buttons that the prototypes of these wrecks carry are coded in a in the previously described decay that varies depending on where the ship has been abandoned. The compartments of these crafts as contain undamaged yet aged components for typical ship engines of their size and caliber. All these mechanisms have been consumed by rust and age in the same way as the other ships. For ships that are wood-based and would not rely on engines for motive power, the other characters will be in a in an extremely sparse space, sometimes containing empty, messy barrels thrown ha haphazardly within them. Ultimately, these boats are virtually as lifeless as the rest of the level, except for the one entity that inhabits these boats. Afterthoughts These creatures are humanoid and come in all forms of builds, weights, genders, and ethnicities that one would expect from humans. They possess the outline or clothing like of clothing like dress, as is skirts, shirts, tops, hats, etc. With it all being in mat as in a smoky black that gets more transparent and closer to the center of the body, it is. From this, however, no internal organs or any of the bodies show below surface level can be viewed. These humanoids, dubbed as afterthoughts, will endlessly wander the decks and caps of the crafts they appear on. They are oftentimes found spouting sentences that, upon first glance, may seem to be nothing more than a random babble of nonsense. Talking to them is an easy feat, though most speak in a cagey, introverted, and somewhat fearful manner. For the longest time, this was ultimately an unknown phenomenon that occurred with the denizens of the skate. However, after the formation of the MEOD, research started to better understand the afterthoughts. <sighs> Bases, outposts, and communities. While well, level 134 has been known about since 2017, an official base of any group was not planned in its conception with, until the first few months of 2022 by the MEG. Hang on. What is this? Or is this going to be broken? 13 1. That's another level. We should not go there right now. During this, though, the 2022-13-1 incident occurred. Following the immediate aftermath of the event, all work on 0051 was ultimately abandoned to focus its people and supplies on the, on the investigation of the anomaly. The project only reignited five months after the formation of the MEOD. With the added number of groups and people under the wings of this conglomerate organization, it was decided that one of the first projects to prove the worth of the MEOD would be to restart the creation of the 0051 and the thought examination of afterthoughts to and the thorough examination of the afterthoughts to confirm or deny theories around them. Work started in November, or with the base construction being completed in December, turning into houses 13 inhabitants that originated from both the Meg and the Kalag Institute in order to Catalog and understand what the afterthoughts were. <sighs> Investigation of the afterthoughts. As stated prior, at the formation of, of MEOD, it was chosen for a new heads of the organization to prove the worth of it if the skeptical groups had yet to join the organization. As such, using the strength of the former or, or MEG, BNTG, um, smaller undocumented groups, and loaned help from um, the, at the time, un, un, um, um, unamalgamated Kellogg Institute, it was officially found out that the afterthoughts were deceased individuals caught in transit between the level or front rooms where they held from and the grave. Though conversing with the newly renamed Afterthoughts, it was learned that their babble and nonsense were actually random memories of their lives, which they exposited to themselves over and over again. Oftentimes, being memories that troubled or shook them in the time that they were alive. As well as the above of information, it was learned that talking to these purgatory stuck souls aided and benefited those, these people under travels to the beyond. 
but not all souls have went up into level 134 were troubled, upset, or unfulfilled in life. 21 of the 80-25 initial focus groups were as such. Though speaking to these people on resolving their crimes, the time taken for them to reach a grave was reduced significantly. It has been it has even been documented that occasional afterthoughts sometimes leave immediately upon being enlightened after their troubles are resolved. <clears throat> While there are 75 recorded or transcribed I've interviews and talks with afterthoughts, for the sake of brevity, only two examples of interviews with prior souls have been chosen for this article. Which would be Sally and Brennan and Tedley. Let's start with Sally. Begin log. The time is noon. The date is, I'm going to say May 1st, 2023. Location, level 134, stood upon an old wooden fishing vessel that was beach in that was in a beach location. A viewer is Amalia Hanks. <sighs> at this time, Sally is standing alone at the stern of the ancient sea ship. She was looking down at the sand with her hands together, partly speaking to herself awkwardly and in a, in a confused ma a bewildered manner. Somalia Hanks, after her watching the small spirit, chose to approach them, tapping their so shoulder as they overlooked the boat. Somalia was followed by Mark Sampson, Jane Baker, and Penelope Harvison, with the team being in charge of the camera, audio equipment, and cataloging respectively. Sally seemed to jump a little, gasping in surprise at being spoken to and tapped. Her arms coiled in and to hug her stomach, turning around slowly after. Though hard to tell, her brow furrowed as her head told up to look at the group, choosing to take a, all, a few small, slow steps away from them until her legs hit the wall of the CERN. Speak with me? Why? Sally asked in a somewhat childish tone and voice. We just want to know more about you, miss. Miss Hanks looks briefly behind her to check on the other individuals on her group. That's a couple questions, and this is all. No harm in it, I hope. Mm, I don't know. You're all pointing things at me. I don't like it. Miss Hanks sighs quietly, glancing at Miss Baker, with Miss Hanks opting to push away the boom and pull away from Miss Sally a slight bit. Let's try to make this person comfortable, you three. Try to stay out of her face. Oh, um, thanks, Nair. Sally continued to exhibit clear shows of awkwardness, with Somalia choosing to take a step back from Sally and fan out her farms to move Mr. Sampson, Miss Baker, and Miss Harvinson back with her, choosing to do so purely for the comfort of the afterthought. May we ask questions now? Uh, uh, okay, ma'am. Easy one to start. Uh, what's your name? Oh, I can answer that. S Sally. Okay, noted. So, Sally, what are you doing out here? You don't look too old. N no, I'm only eight, and uh, I don't know, I'm just around. No one to really say hi to. Good thing we're here then, eh, kid? Miss Hanks saw Sally in order to comfort her, offering her hand, and for them to hold her take.
I, uh, I guess. Are you sure you, you want my hand? My mom said not to do that. Miss Hanks looks to Miss Harp Senior and informs her to write down that Sally sees her mom. It takes her to we most likely be of American descent. Really? Well, tell me why, Sally. Why is it bad for me to hold your hand? Mom, Mom uh, well, she said that I have spreads. That what I have spreads. Blames it on stuff school gave me or something. Doctor said cancer or whatever isn't contagious, but I trust my mom more than them. Miss Hanks opened her mouth briefly, allegedly to reboot Sally's comment. However, Miss Hanks chose to stay silent on the matter. Choosing instead to retract her hand back from Sally to make the interview quicker and less controversial. Confrontational. Well, I'll trust your mom too. What happened to her? Was she around for you? Sally mumbled, hugging her stomach a bit more as her quiet murmurs turned into upset whimpers. She, uh, she w was sad at me. Then angry, then stopped coming to the doctor's place. I didn't see her again. Why is that? Did she care for you? Mm, I hope so. I want her around when I felt cold, when my head hurt, when I couldn't hear, and when things were black. I want her here. Miss Hanks gave a, a sympathetic, somewhat mournful sigh, glancing back at the at her group with a small shake of her head. Do you need a hug, kid? I don't mind if your stuff's contagious. You sound worth it. Sally sniffled, sculling to Miss Hanks and giving her a hug. Seemingly starting to stop with her head buried under Miss Hanks' neck. Hey there, there. Look, a kid, I'm sorry what happened for you, and I'm sorry your mom wasn't there for you. But I'll stick around for you. Just a lo long enough for you to get to where you're going. Where, where am I going? Somewhere way nicer than here. Way nicer than Doctor's place. Probably won't have your mom for a while, but it'll have people who'll be more than happy to take care of you, Sally. Be there when your mom couldn't be. Miss Hanks looks briefly to her crew, putting her hand along her throat to instruct them to cease the recording. <sighs> Braden Tetley. Begin log. Time, 4.01 p.m. Date, October 5th, 2023. Location, level 134, right beside a rusted yacht in the key level's water portions. Interviewer, Benson Dr up up a Interviewee, Brandon Tetley. Before being spoken to, Mr. Tetley was idling at the front of the overturned vessel, stood with his back against it. Mr. Tetley seemingly had his hand in what appeared to be a tattered, torn hoodie, and was currently witnessing Benson and Droppy, Friedrich Adelik, Catherine Rivers, and Adam Porter. Uh, hey, who are, y are you all? Mr. Tetley's shoulder is held in as his eyes locked fully on the group, and his arms also beginning to quake from within the pockets of his hoodie. 
Hey, no worries, okay? Just like, you know, out and about to explore shit. Wondering if we could ask you a thing or two. Mrs. Tetley frowned in a defensive, upset look, told his head to the side and briefly. Oh? I don't believe that. S stay away! All of you! I mean that! We can stay at this far distance if it'll help calm your nerves. If we're unarmed, untrained in combat, we're like... I don't fucking know, journalists, I guess? Mr. Droppy gives an unsure shrug, keeping his eyes locked to Mr. Tetley. That was a bad line. But it's clear I'm not going to get through to you journalists. Fine, sure, ask your questions, but don't dare take another step! Mr. Droppy erases his eyebrows to the rest of the group in surprise, giving them a shrug when they gave equally confused looks back to them. First then, Mr. Distance Man. What's your name? I can't call you Mr. Distance Man. Speaking in an oid tone, his teeth somewhat gritted. Bread and Tetley, ass. Okay, now that's good. Thank you. The next one. What are you like doing out here? Can you tell us a little? I'm not detailing for s specifics. Just know that I think I died now I'm in whatever the hell this place is. Honestly, kinda ran the money with that one. You are dead. We know it for a fact. You're like a, a trapped soul that can't get to what comes after. It suddenly seems to freeze upon hearing this information, bringing his hands further into his pockets as his head tilted away from the group, looking down to the water what to the waters below his feet. That's really You didn't just kidnap at me to and Steal me to, I don't know, the coast of Havrick or something? The coast of where? Actually, it doesn't matter. We didn't steal you, no. As far as it is to believe, you're just gonna have to trust us. Mr. Tatley's general persona seemed to dwindle and diminish, his his arms deflating out of his hoodie pockets. Oh, right. Dead. Got it. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Had to happen eventually. I can understand that's probably a big pill to swallow. Although, it sure would be for me, you know. I guess, whatever. I just wish I did more is all. Are there more questions now, whatever your name is? Well, I have some set ones, but what do you mean by that? Wishing you did more and all. Hmm. <sighs> I prefer if you stuck to whatever your free plan to questions are. Mr. Dr Droppy temporarily paused, contemplating briefly to himself, shaking his head. I could, but this is really just meant to know about you, what went on in your life, and why you're here instead of what comes after. My questions will speed up this process tenfold for you. F fine. Fine then, jerk. What did you want to know about again? Just about the whole wanting to do more thing. I've forgotten your, your exact quote. Right. Yeah, okay. Mr. Tetley took a long, drawn out sigh, kicking his foot lightly into the water. 
I wanted more out of life, I guess. I had ambitions, and they got squandered. Squandered how? Mr. he frowns and raises his lips to give a bitter, disappointed look. To Mr. Droppy, rolling his eyes. Life and circumstance. Both put old snake eyes on me. No real parents, no real home. All I... Dude, all I wanted was to be a racer. It was a childhood dream at foster homes and orphanages. Did you get far with that dream? No. Not in the slightest. Barely learned how to drive. Never spoke to the right people. Fuck. I never even played any racing games. Shit, I'm sorry. Can I, uh, ask how you got here? You mean how I died? Yeah, yeah, basically. Eat that, to be honest. If you're okay with sharing. Some... Some guy. I I literally didn't know who they were. They just... They shoved out of nowhere, stabbed me. Left me to die on the street. I was there for hours. No help came. No one heard me. I was... Alone. Alone and unfulfilled. Hey, look, uh, the Mr. Droppy begins to speak. He's swiftly cut off and interrupted by Mr. Tetley, his face morphing into something that's more upset and troubled. Do, do I get another chance of what comes after? It's not just like hell or something, it, is it? Is, is my chance to live my dreams over? Truth be told, uh, no clue. I don't know enough about those kinds of places, personally, it's to, to tell ya. However, I'd like to think there is. Yeah, would be nice, wouldn't it? I hope your thought is right. Uh, I'm sure it is, Brandon. You'll get your chance to be at race, so you just gotta leave here to get it. Yeah, sounds easy enough. Thanks, you bunch of idiots. Entrances and exits. Entrances. Inside level 46, a water vacation should be able to find trapdoors buried into the sandy dunes. Once sufficiently uncovered, they can be used to reach level 134. As with most of uh, level 797 exits, holes in the wall as long as fast can occasionally lead to this level. This is particularly so oh, in more waterlogged and flooded cave systems. Jumping into the ocean via the, freezer, the freezer's hatch on level 8, 880 will watch any individual who did so on the shores of level 134. Most wanderers materialize specifically on the ribs of the small of the small sand islands. Exits by diving into the portion ends of the water that exceed the usual two. Oof, a depth, one has a slight chance of re-emerging on level 121. Although extremely rare, the top ends of escalators are occasional sites within level 134 and are entirely functional despite high possible water and sand interference. Boring these escalators and allowing them to no clip oneself through the floor will lead a one to level 233. At seemingly random chances, it's possible for the ocean and beds to part way and transport those underneath the opening into level 499's ponds and rivers. Russ said somewhat oddly, inflates periscopes within the water to originally rise from the bed and in water, grabbing onto these and allowing oneself to be pulled under by them while awake oneself on level 880. Well, that was level 134. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!